Hey, how's it going? Do this all first. Today I'm going to show you how you can both visually inspect and then test the spark plug using a basic multimeter. All right, now here's a look at a brand new spark plug. As you may know, this is where the spark plug wire connects to your spark plug. And then the voltage through your spark plug wire travels through the center electrode, which starts here and goes all the way down to this tip of the center electrode out here. And then this piece is going to be your ground electrode, and which is connected to the threads here which uh, is connected to the base and this is where it threads into your cylinder head. And the porcelain here in white basically wraps around your center electrode all the way down to provided insulation. Now a lot of times the discoloration or the different types of deposits that accumulate on your, the tip of your spoke plug can tell you a lot about how your engine is running so that's what I'm going to try to briefly cover today. Alright so first let's look at a worn spark plug. As you can see the center electrode is somewhat rounded here. That simply means that it's uh, worn out due to excessive use and there's also some discoloration on the insulation here. You can see some dark gray or even tan uh, deposits. That's somewhat normal once the center electrode wears out that discoloration or just simply due to uh, excessive use. You have some discoloration on this anyway. But this doesn't indicate any problems with your engine. This is simply a worn spark plug. And when you put these next to each other you can tell exactly how worn the center electrode on this one is. And when this happens your engine is just not going to run efficiently. As a result you're going to suffer from very bad gas mileage. And if you don't replace this and this wears out even further you're going to have a hard time starting your car or start having misfires. Now let's say you pull out your spark plug and the tip of your spark plug is covered completely in a black soot or or basically carbon buildup. Now it's important not to confuse carbon buildup with oil and basically the carbon buildup is the stuff you see inside your either other control valve or maybe an EGR valve. If that's the case that basically means your engine is running rich which means you're getting either too much fuel or not enough oxygen into your combustion chamber. And here are a couple of things that might cause that condition. On the fuel side let's say if you have a leaking fuel injector that's leaking too much fuel into the combustion chamber that could cause it. Or if you have an older car let's say uh, your engine is carbureted then the carburetor does not adjust it properly could cause that too. And a couple of things on the air side that could cause this is let's say if you have a clogged air filter or some other restriction in the air intake side then that's going to keep uh, enough air from entering your combustion chamber which then is going to result in the fuel not burning completely which then results in having a rich fuel air fuel mixture. Also I should mention that the problems with your ignition system like a bad spark plug wire or a bad ignition coil which sends a weak spark to your spark plug could cause that too because that weak spark is not going to be enough to burn the entire air fuel mixture therefore some hydrocarbons or gas is going to be left over causing you to run rich. Alright so next let's say you pull this out and then the entire tip of the spark plug is covered in oil or basically gooey black stuff. And if that's the case you either have bad piston rings or a bad valve stem seal. And if you want to be very specific we're talking about the oil ring on your piston which is this guy here that you can see this third one. See as your piston goes up and down inside your cylinder the oil is going to be sloshing around in your crankcase and some oil is going to get on your cylinder walls. If your oil ring is not working properly it's not going to be able to wash that oil that's on your cylinder walls back down into the crankcase and some oil is going to get into uh, the combustion chamber which is right above your uh, piston. And if this wears out badly enough that oil is going to be uh, all over the place. It's going to get on your spark plug and foul your spark plug. Now the second cause for oil on your spark plug could be a bad stem seal. Now here's as you can see a stem seal. Basically your intake and exhaust valves that are in your cylinder head travel up and down through here. This basically seals around them and keeps oil from leaking on top of your valves and then entering your combustion chamber from there. Now if this rubber insert here wears out just the oil is just going to leak past this uh, rubber piece onto the valves and then find its way into the combustion chamber. But generally speaking you won't see a oil fouled spark plug from a bad valve stem seal. See your spark plug when the oil leak is slow maybe from a valve stem seal or even like a piston ring that's just starting to wear out is that it's able to burn off that oil but instead what you'll see is a bunch of white deposits like uh, I guess white crystallized deposits all over the tip of your spark plug which are going to indicate to you that you're burning oil and if that's the case generally speaking it's either a bad valve stem seal or a piston ring 
that's just starting to wear out. And the last condition I'm going to cover today is if you see blisters, or I guess uh, blister type of wear on the insulation or maybe the ground electrode, uh, that usually means that your engine is running too hot and your combustion temperatures are too high. And a couple things that could cause that is, first of all, if you have a problem with your cooling system, maybe a bad water pump or a bad radiator fan that causes your engine temperature to rise, therefore raising your combustion temperatures. Another cause could be a lean condition, which is is usually caused by a vacuum leak but also an over advanced ignition timing could cause it as well so that's something you want to keep in mind when trying to diagnose this problem all right now let's say your spoke plug doesn't have any of those symptoms but uh, you want to make sure that your the plug itself is structurally sound so first thing is to measure the resistance of our center electrode and generally speaking the resistance should be somewhere between four to eight thousand ohms depending on your spoke plug so we grab our multimeter and we're going to set it to 20k or 20,000 ohms since that's the next number up from the amount of of ohms we're expecting to measure. Next we attach one of our test leads to one end and we touch the other end with our other test lead. As you can see we got 6.77 thousand ohms or in other words 6,770 ohms which is about spec. Next on the multimeter we'll switch our settings to continuity. Next we're going to measure and make sure we have continuity from this ground electrode all the way to the base of the spark plug. As you can see we do on this one but as you can see we don't have continuity on this one which usually means that there is just a carbon belt up on this and that you need to get a wire brush, use a plastic wire brush with some brake clean and thoroughly clean this out. Next we'll need to make sure that the center electrode is not shorting to the ground side. Sometimes inside of the spark plug this insulation breaks apart and the center electrode comes into contact with the ground side and if that happens it's just the, the the voltage is just going to short out to the ground side before it gets to the tip. Therefore, your spark plug is not going to work properly. And again, we get our multimeter, but we're going to put the setting to the maximum allowed setting on the ohm side so that we measure any kind of shorting between these two, and that is 20 mega ohms. Next, we'll put one test lead on the center electrode, the other one on the ground. And if the test before this, you had continuity on the ground side, you don't need to worry about cleaning it. But if you didn't, make sure whatever you touch on the ground side that is completely clean so that you get a correct reading and as you can see we have no reading on this that means these two are not shorting out to each other therefore we're okay there and that's all there is to it give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this video subscribe if you want to see more like it but also consider checking out some of my other related videos i'll put up on this side of the screen so you can click on them there'll also be links in the description box as well all right thanks for watching i'll see you next time